Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Unfilter with Pastor David. Pastor, welcome back. Oh, well, thank you, John. The flu bug had hit you and Marie pretty well. Yeah, did a good job on us. And so I'm thankful that you're you're able to come back and and we have a big season of Christmas coming up. So we're looking forward to spending Christmas Eve with the church and Christmas morning with the church family mm -hmm. as well. Yep. Pastor, last night, I, I kind of want to tie a couple things together. You, you mentioned something last night in your message in, from 1 John chapter 4. You mentioned uh, the acceptance, and, uh, and, and I wrote it down, uh, the fascination and acceptance with the spirit of Antichrist. And we can look at that in many different angles. And when we look at it through the perspective of the church, we can see many things that would, per would pertain to that spirit of Antichrist being so accepted, especially when, when it comes to abortion, uh, my body, my choice. You know, we see those demonic influences in those decisions. And then in a different area, we also see things that are also demonic, that are that has that spirit of Antichrist, especially when it comes to government spending and, and, and our border situation. You know, we see in, in one hand, we see our country wanting to give almost 50, 55, $45 billion to the help of Ukraine, yet at the same time, we're having this crisis at our border. We see the spirit of Antichrist, again, creeping into the church. So you take a look at all of this, and, and, and when you were teaching last night, I realized the acceptance and the fascination and the spirit of Antichrist is with us today. Well, it's been with us, as John said in 1 John 4, uh, even in his day, he said that the spirit of Antichrist is already here. So the spirit of Antichrist and the Antichrist are two different kinds of things. The spirit of Antichrist is uh, revealed through the, through the teachings of, and pronouncements of the false prophets and false teachers, but they are actually paving the way for the world to finally accept the one who's going to come um, in, in the end, the last, um, uh, uh, what's the word, the last uh, the manifestation, the, the last manifestation of the actual one who's referred to as Antichrist. And so, la yeah, last night we were talking a little bit about that out of 1 John chapter 4 and how that uh, the world is prepared uh, and is being re prepared daily for the acceptance of this one who's going to exalt himself above all that is to be worshipped and pronounce himself to be the one who is to be worshipped. And, and we're seeing that already in a variety of ways. And you mentioned, for example, the issue of abortion, you know, the idea of a death cult. You know, I've mentioned in, in our teachings in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17, we're not to love the world nor the things of the world. Um, you know, anything that's within the world, what is that? Well, the world in the... In the the way the word world is used in that particular um, scripture is in reference to a satanic death system. That's what the world is. Mm -hmm. It is energized by the enemy, and it's a satanic death system. When Jesus speaks concerning the enemy, he says that he is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. And you see that spirit even now manifested in, in, um, in world governments. We have it within our own government. You know, Paul, when he was speaking to the Ephesians, was speaking about the principalities and powers, mm -hmm. and those are demonically energized uh, systems of governance that that uh, that we experience even in our day. And so, what are the attributes of of this demonic system? Well, Jesus said there's, it's death and it's lying, and so we see that manifested pretty clearly in much of what takes place today. You know, I'm old enough to remember when abortion was regarded as something that was simply an illegal thing because it constituted the taking of a, an innocent life. And uh, yet, you know, when Roe v. Wade was, was, was passed and all, it became entrenched in the mind of, of the youth who, who didn't grow up with a moral system mm -hmm. that actually regarded life. It became entrenched in the youth that it was their right to kill. And, and you know, obviously we've seen the argument, it's my body, my choice, except I guess when it comes to receiving vaccinations <laughs> and things of that nature. And so they, they, they speak in that way because they're actually deceived. They're actually part of a system that is a death system. And so Antichrist is going to be bringing this death system. He already has energized it. 
and uh, we see that in our day. We also see it in, in the, uh, the, what's the word, in the disregard of, uh, of government in the sense of, you know, if I don't like that law, mm. I, I'm just not going to obey it. You know, and even from the smallest things, just a couple of days ago, Marie and I were driving in our neighborhood. We came up to a stop sign. As we came to the stop sign, this, this young woman just drove right through it and dri right in front of us, just drove right through her stop sign. She looked at in our direction and I was looking at her like, what did you just do? And she smiles and keeps driving. <laughs> there was so much nonchalance about breaking laws. I mean, even the small things, you go to... Uh, a store and they have handicapped parking and these people just climb out of their car they park it and go get their coffee or whatever and they they don't um, they don't care it's this lack of care many years ago in Columbine when Columbine occurred I was teaching on a Sunday morning and I asked the question I said to the people our people at that time I said uh, how many of you believe that the classroom should be the safest place for a child. You know, and, and you know, how many? And, and our fellowship, you know, responded, well, yes, you know, because Columbine had just occurred and it's all on, a, it's on our mind. So I said, how many think that a classroom should be the safest place for a child? And they all agreed. I said, that's where you're wrong. The womb is the safest wow. place for a child. I said, but if you kill a child in the womb, you will kill a child in a classroom. We've been seeing this for years, John. And so this supposed outrage, and perhaps is real in the heart of some people, that, uh, oh, look at what's happening. Therefore, we need to ban guns, you know, because guns kill people. Well, you know, go to Japan, go to England. And uh, what do they use to kill people? They use knives, mm -hmm. you know. So the gun isn't the problem. The human heart is. I, I have guns. I, I, I used to fire them. I haven't fired them in a long time. But I, I used to like to shoot at targets, you know. That gun has never come out of my shelf. It's never come out of my gun safe. And it's never shot me. It takes a human being to pick up the gun, make a decision, pull the trigger. So what we're looking at isn't the problem with guns. It's a problem with hearts, right? And so that's what we have right now. And look at our, look at our nation. Mm -hmm. So right now we're worried about the Ukraine. Uh, where's all this money coming from? Billions upon billions upon billions of dollars, sending them our, our, uh, our particular uh, weapons that, that they have to be trained to use. And they're demanding more and more. And the thing is, is of course we concern ourselves with people in the Ukraine, etc. Of course, because we should have human compassion for all. But at the same time, why isn't the NATO nations, why aren't they taking care of their own problems? See, Russia is no threat to us. That's something that was drummed up during the Trump administration, and they continue to, to pump that up, and they, they're looking at China. China doesn't do anything mm -hmm. good for us. They take in, it steals our technology, they steal our ideas, they spy on us, they tell us what to say, and, and, and nobody says a thing. Why is that? Well, I, I believe, my personal opinion, is, and I think it's true, is that, uh, that Biden and his family is in the pocket of China. It seems pretty obvious, but nobody really wants to say that outside of some conservative news sources. See, so this is, this is how the Antichrist is going to be accepted. This is the kind of thing where people don't want to believe their eye, what their eyes right. are seeing. Like they say, don't believe your lying eyes. They hmm. don't want to believe it. They are so caught up with a, with a way of thinking with, uh, with their theories of, to the point that truth doesn't matter. It's what I feel. Mm. And so that is drummed into us 24-7. There are words that are used in TV today that were banned in movies in, in the 40s and even into the right. 50s, John. Even some of the commercials that we were talking about last night with, you know, we talked about the different commercials that so subtle. You see, you know, like we were talking about uh, an animal on an, on a certain location in a commercial, and it's promoting the bestiality. It's, it's promoting bestiality, yes. and and uh, and you know, if, if someone were to ask you this, Pastor, 15, 20, 30 years ago, about the the anti antichrist removing his mask in today's world, what would your response be? Thirty years ago, I believe we would we would have been in a better a better state of mind to be able to recognize the antichrist thirty years ago. But the corruption and decay has continued at such a rapid rate 
that there will be people who will welcome him thinking that he is the answer. Because if you think in terms of world leaders at the moment, name one that you can respect. Talk, uh, do, you, do you respect Biden? Do you respect uh, Harris? Do you respect you know, the, the, the Prime Minister of, of uh, Trudeau of Canada? Who do you respect? You know, you don't respect any. They're all weak. Every one of them is weak. I think that's one of the reasons why Trump, who wasn't weak, and I'm not promoting him, but it's a fact, he wasn't weak. You know, they didn't like him because they thought that, many thought that, oh, he's a bully, this and that. And it's because they haven't seen a man in so right. long <laughs> that they don't even know what men are. Because what has happened is we have effeminate, we have made men effeminate, and we've made them, you know, into uh, the women, you know, and the women have become more like men in this perverse, twisted world that we live in right now, John. So, you know, it, it doesn't take much time to, to just think through what's going on. Like I was sharing last night, and we'll close with this because I don't want to go as long as I can about this subject, but... No, I was sharing last night. I, it's not that I have a sentimental, nostalgic wish that we were back in the 50s. But you cannot tell me that the 50s were as evil as we are today. Right. You can't tell me my father and my mother would have liked to see homosexual parades. You, would, you can't tell me. I just saw a quote for a, from a woman who said that Jesus, she's on The View. She said that uh, Jesus would be leading the LGBTQ he would be leading the gay pride parade. She said that. That's profanity. That's blasphemy. That is such ignorance that it beggars description. And yet that gets, that goes into, and they're clapping over mm. this. Yeah, like Jesus would have led a, a homosexual parade. That's where we're at today, That is so John. disgusting. It's, disgu it's beyond disgusting. It's so anger provoking. And we Christians, we're so quiet about things. I don't think we should be violent. God knows that. I do not preach violence. You know, those who live by the sword die by it. But you have to have a spine. And the men need to stand up yep. and say, this is as far as we're going. We're not going any further. There are a lot of weak men and, and overpowering women. And, and we are in a, a move towards a, a, a devastation of the United States as we at one time knew it. We have lost male leadership. Uh, there's a lot of children, and it's sad to say, a lot of little boys who have no dad, they have no father in their home, so they're being raised by mamas who are doing the best they yeah. can sometimes. Sometimes they don't care, but they're doing the best they can with what they have. And, and these children are growing up uh, feminized, and they're growing up with, with uh, gender confusion, and, and you name it, you know, suicide and things. No, we're living in rough times, and the government is taking, taking rights from us a little bit at a time, yeah. where you can have a tattoo parlor open but you can't have a church open when you can have a woman who goes and gets her hair done without a mask who tells me to, that I need to wear no we're living in gross hypocrisy and and you know you, you want to dance you're going to pay the fiddle mm. the fiddler and that's what's taking place so the church has to wake yes. up John and I know we're, we're going to end here I wonder why we're not mentioned in prophecy I don't know and maybe that's another discussion for us to have down the road but as you're saying this I'm just thinking it's no wonder we're not mentioned in, in time in the book of Revelation or Ezekiel or any of those 38 and 39. And, and so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, Pastor, thank you so much. That, I mean, there's so much, I, and maybe there's going to be a part two down the road, because even like with this whole exchange in so the Soviet Union for a prisoner that was just recently. Oh, that was ridiculous. And, and, and maybe that's something we can speak about down the road. And we but, left a hero there while we took somebody who wouldn't even uh, stand for the, uh, for the national anthem. Unbelievable. Uh, it, Anything for votes. Anything for votes. So we'll take care of the Ukrainian border, but we, we are allowing, we've allowed four million people to stream across ours. And they're just right now just getting ready. They're sleeping on the streets of El Paso in different places because this president is trying to change the demographic of America by bringing in people who will be beholden to them uh, and vote Democrat when they're given the right to. And you watch, because they're already trying to get illegal immigrants the right to vote. They're already moving in that direction. You watch what's going to take place. No wonder we're not mentioned in prophecy. If we're not awake, <laughs> you better wake up. Uh, Pastor, thank you so much, and and uh, church family, you know, it, it, and this is so amazing why we do come to a, an amazing church where we hear God's word and we can stand up for God's truth, and uh, and I hope this is provoking and to keep the, our country in prayer, our administration in prayer, but Jesus, please come soon. 
uh, because uh, we're, we're in those times Amen. of hypocrisy, gross Amen. hypocrisy. Thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor, thank you. I uh, want to invite you guys to our Christmas Eve service. That's going to be 6 p.m. Uh, here in the sanctuary. Have amazing worship. Uh, Pastor's going to have a timely message Hope from First so. John. Yeah. And then, uh, and then Christmas morning, 8.30 and 10.45. Invite you guys to come out and join us for Christmas morning. Uh, we love you guys. Pastor David, thank you so much. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.